Okay, if you look at the report uh, for the month, we had very few calls up at the lake this past month. Um, on September 13th, uh, 751, uh, we cleaned out the tanks and uh, replaced the uh, uh, plumbing in the pump um, on, their, on their cottage. Uh, September 24th, 743, uh, where red light was on, Dick and Wayne pumped it out. On the 27th, Wayne replaced the pump on that, so that was uh, two, two more pumps added to the list that we had. Um, I think so, that made like a total of 11 for the year. Uh, on October 1st, the Hughes Cottage down by the Chestnut, uh, they called and said that there was a sewer smell. We went down there and all it was was a vent pipe that was plugged up. And Wayne just cleaned things out and everything was back to normal. So there are no issues with that. Basically, that's all I had for the month. Um, I just wanted to report to the board that at the end of the month, coming up here, we're going to be shutting off the UV bulbs. We can do that with the DO, or DEC's approval. And we also not have to do the rounds for the, for the rest of the winter okay. until next year. Uh, Toby, anything lined up? Um, I've seen him going back and forth up there. Really, I haven't really gotten a report from him in the last uh, few weeks. So, but I, I should have a report for you by next month on that. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing, and what I would like to do to start with is um, I would I'd like to address the pipeline issue. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a lot of people in the, uh, the town of Sanford that is concerned uh, and probably confused. Um, the Bluestone pipeline, my understanding is that uh, that's a 20 inch line that is coming out of Pennsylvania and going to the Millennium. I, I understand that has been approved. That is under the state authority. Uh, I believe that that construction is probably going to start somewhere around the 20th. But now there is another pipeline <coughs> called the Constitution, which um, we've been getting calls in reference to that. Uh, the town has had um, routing maps <coughs> for, I don't know, a month or so. And I guess what they called it to begin with was Route 8. Now there is a, what has been called Route B, I believe now it's the uh, alternate route, I believe that's the way it's called. <laughs> and the maps are out in the lobby, and, if, and anybody that's interested is welcome to look at those maps. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are going to be concerned about the Constitution. That's, I believe, under FERC, it's, uh, federal. Um, I think the pr procedure dealing with that is going to be somewhat different than the uh, under the state. Uh, when Bluestone come in, they were very open. They set up the office right here in the village. They did move back into Pennsylvania because of the uh, state regulations and, and everything. But we're fortunate tonight. At first, I guess I better say there's two names on the table out there. There's James Wallace, which is uh, from the Constitution Pipeline. And <coughs> there's numbers and things that out there. So anybody that wants to contact the Constitution Pipeline, I think he is the uh, Trump person. And we also are fortunate tonight to have Jim Wharton, uh, which he's a landowner uh, in Windsor. He was a person that was very involved in the uh, negotiations uh, with the laser line that was in Windsor. Uh, the understanding is that they did a great job over there. and. Warped Jim is with us tonight. I'd like to have him stand up and uh, introduce himself. Jim Warden, 
uh, local uh, dairy farmer, third generation dairy farmer, uh, president of the Windsor Coldwell Gas Coalition. Um, been involved with the natural gas since it showed up here, but above all else was uh, I'm a landowner advocate. And I'm also, right now, I'm the chairman of the Upstate Landowners Group, which is a group we've started to negotiate and deal with the Constitution to get a fair deal. Uh, anybody that um, has concerns as individuals uh, in reference to this pipeline, I would suggest that you get in touch with Jim. Um, I believe that he can help you in uh, uh, several ways. Uh, as a group, I'm sure that the, you have a better opportunity to negotiate with the Constitution. And Jim has a reputation of doing a pretty good job. Um, his name and numbers out there also. And at the end of the public uh, session here, I'm sure Jim would spend some time, let's say, in the lobby and entertain <laughs> questions. Anybody that uh, has concerns about this pipeline, I'm sure there's a lot of them that should have. Um, and I want to thank you, Jim, for coming over. Now to continue the public hearing, we passed a resolution last month that uh, said that we would not be entertaining any questions for or against fracking. Um, that continues on to this meeting. And um, I'm sure if anybody is interested in leaving any information in reference to that, they can leave that information with the clerk. Uh, if they have it this evening, they can leave it, or at any time, you can leave it. And we will consider that. At this time, uh, I'd like to open it up for any questions. Look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Any other questions? Steve, we appreciate you being here tonight. If, uh, would you have anything that you would like to express as part of the county? Well, obviously I'm pleased to be here. Um, I came over to see if you had any questions or concerns. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm Steve Hers. I'm the county legislator uh, for Sanford. Um, I try to come over here as often as I can. I come to the Sanford meetings and I hustle right over to the village board meetings. Um, I haven't got anything in particular to bring uh, except for the, the bus transit issue that's still ongoing and we're still discussing that. Um, I'll be honest with all of you, I am not optimistic that's going to continue. Uh, ridership is, if anything, has declined. Um, and as I explained last year, difficult if not impossible to sustain that service when there's only two or three riders. And it's our tax money as well as everybody's tax money. But that decision will be made fairly soon. It, it to my understanding, has not been finalized. Uh, but I certainly entertain any questions or any concerns from anybody. Well, sales tax is an issue, but I guess we won't discuss it. We certainly can. Um, I've had discussions with people in the administration um, and on the legislature um, expressed my, my concern that uh, municipalities could use some help. Um, you folks, I, mean, I don't know if you know this or not, but I put, when, when that resolution was determined back a couple of years ago, I put the uh, review, the mandated review that was my resolution that I put in. And that seems to be where every where the folks that I'm talking to are saying that they'll review it next year. Um, I'm not getting any traction in suggesting that it be reviewed this year. I'm not saying it won't happen, but I'm telling you that I'm not getting any traction. Well, thank you very much. On this 
municipalities, I believe, at this time. I know ours is is really strapped this year. Oh, I understand that. Um, you know I do. We're going through our budget uh, process tomorrow night, and the preliminary part of that is looking like we're we're looking at six and above, unless we can come up with some something that it, um, it's not going to be easy. <coughs> Anything that the county can do to help us, we appreciate it. Well, obviously, you know, I'm doing what I can, but I don't want to. I don't want to raise false hopes. I don't want to give anybody any uh, idea that it's likely. It's, I, I'd say, frankly, it's changing at this point. I mean, I know the county executive has indicated that she's going to increase it 10 percent more than uh, than was indicated that would. So there's going to be more money than would have been under the previous uh, agreement, if you will. Um, so you're probably going, probably going to see more. Obviously, it depends on sales tax, and who knows how that's going to be. Um, again, I, I think it would be foolish of me to tell you that you're going to see a significant increase. I don't think you are. You know, that's, I wish I could tell you something different, but I can't. And if, if everything, everybody's okay, I'm going to hustle over and the village. Okay. okay. Uh, appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we'll close the public hearing. I think I should re rephrase that. Yes, please. Five minutes. I believe the only minutes we have is the regular meeting for nine eleven. Motion to approve the minutes from the September meeting. Is there a second? Not second, Dallas. All approved? Right. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Any trouble over you there? Uh, we had a couple come up this month. They have to be placed. Uh, one would be out on Johnson Road by Perico Gas. The people couldn't get the sign post and everything this time, so they must have put a chain on it and bent it over and took the sign and just wiggled it and broke it off the top. So it's still a continuing problem. I spoke with the troopers again on the issue. They think they have a suspect. But now they just gotta catch them right here with it. And they 
need reasonable cause to pull them over at this time. Yes, we're way over budget due to signage. You guys can see that. With our temporary signage, should we creep road and river road? No, that would be Broome County. County. Yep, that's a county road down there. We do have our budget meeting tomorrow evening, <coughs> and I'm sure that ninth month will be valuable in working with for our budget meeting. <coughs> Is there any question on the eighth month? I'll make a motion we accept the 831 supervisor's report. Second motion. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye.
spoke to Bob. He said it's usually in the end of October, beginning of November, you guys usually. Yeah. Is there any particular day that's better for everybody? You could do it during the morning or something like that. I'll need a little notice. I'm figuring probably around 10 ish. By the time we get, get the guys out, get to work, and uh, it's going to take us a couple hours. I think it's at 8 tonight, so I'm sure I can. So you need more. two weeks, don't you? I need about 10 days at least, yeah. Okay. I'd like to set around 10 o'clock area time. It's going to take us a couple hours, so. Kind of get the crew out and work and make sure I get out, check on them, whatever. Would you like that day? Is there any day that works better for you guys than Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? It doesn't really matter. Tuesday, Wednesday, is better for me. Halloween morning? 31st? Mm -hmm. Not good for me. You just said Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 30th?
the week, next week, the week of the 15th. He's figuring 18th or 19th building should be here. I didn't know what he... He didn't give me a time. That's he what he... he thought it was going to take a couple weeks longer than what he anticipated it was going to be. Okay, so then why you put us like the first week of November then? If he's anticipating a couple yeah. of weeks. Right. So we're probably looking towards the end of November by completes. Uh, when I spoke to Bertley Juder today, he said as soon as it comes in, he plans on going right to it. Okay, um, I spoke to Kevin a little bit. We had a little extra money into my equipment funds there, and uh, we uh, needed to put another computer out for timekeeping into the other room. So we're using the ones that the school donated to us for the timekeeping. We want a uh, wireless, we bought a little wireless adapter so they have wireless internet out there so they can get up to the timekeeping things. So what I've done is I ordered another computer for my office uh, for my new deputy when he starts. And uh, I also spoke to Blue Storm about taking the old computers that we have in uh, storage over there. I'd like to see them take them uh, to recycle them for the simple reason I don't know personally what kind of information is on there. And I don't think we should be just throwing out the recycle containers so John Q. Public can get whatever information on those old computers. So I just want to make sure that was okay with the board that we did send them to Blue Storm for the proper recycling. All right, I found a problem with our uniform company, Universal. Uh, we've been billing billed for an employee for the last couple of years that's been retired. There's a bill I've been doing some little research and checking the bills, so on and so forth. And uh, we've been overbilled for a couple of years now for this one particular employer that was been retired with the township. So, and uh, they had a, in fine print there, they're raising our rates due to fuel, so on and so forth. Man, something is right here. So I got on the phone with the company out of Syracuse Universe there, and I expressed to the guy, he said, listen, we're on a budget here. Uh, you're budgeted and ready. We have a contract with you. You should not be raising, raising our rates at all. And I said, on the other hand, uh, you've been charging me for an employee for the last two years, which when I want to look at his uniforms, I have like an inch of dust on them because nobody's ever touched them. But meanwhile, your charges, to take them back. He says, well, I don't want to hate, hate to lose business, so on and so forth. They gave me the sob story. He said, uh, the, what I can do for you is I can compensate you a couple weeks uh, for everything. Everybody's uniforms, all our rugs, everything for the whole shebang, for the whole shop. Which, if you take that money and you equal it out, it basically paid back one full year of the employees run over those uniforms. So I figured I had to meet with him in the middle for the simple reason somebody should have caught this way before I did. You know, so I can't lay the whole burden onto them because they switch, switch employees, so on and so forth. Very good. So you just have a heads up on that. And the last thing I have, I uh, want to introduce you guys to my new deputy. Jay, you want to stand up? Jay Vandermark, he'll be starting here with the town uh, next Monday, the 15th. And my deputy for the highway superintendent. Welcome aboard. Thank you. If you guys have any questions for him, he's here tonight. Feel free to ask him after the meeting or whatever. If you have anything now. And that's all I have. Thank you. Work. Okay. Uh, the town received um, building permit report from Code Enforcement Officer Walton, uh, Walter Ottens, and Dog Patrol Officer report. Also, he has copies of those. While you're on it, though, work. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Uh, it was a fairly busy month. Uh, there's an animal cruelty case I'm doing right now. I'll be in court with it next week. I'm working with the state police. I've had a lot of time tied up into it and a bunch of trips back and forth to, to Sydney, which last month accounts for a lot of my time. Those things eat up a lot of my time, the animal cruelty stuff, and it seems like we've done a lot of it lately. Um, seems like there's more all the time. Yeah. And I've, I've got a long list of going with dog license that I haven't been able to really get to, and I've you know I've tried to, to call people and be the nice guy and you know say get down and license your dog, but that doesn't work. So from now on, I'm just gonna write tickets. I mean, it's, it's gonna be simple and easier than wasting my time calling people that aren't gonna do what they say they're gonna do. So it'll be a, a lot more coming in. I, Okay. 
Anybody has any questions? You will be getting a bill, a bill for a cremation of a dog and, and some vet bills, but that's going to carry over in the criminal case. So ultimately, you won't be responsible for it. It'll be the, the dog owner. So just don't be shocked when you, when you get a bill. Because I imagine that's going to be fairly expensive. to consider scheduling a public hearing to hear comments and objections and review the proposed 2013 year budget for the Aquatic Lake Sewer District, um, which would be next month that needs to be scheduled for, and also scheduling a public hearing to hear objections and review the preliminary budget for the Town of Sanford year 2013. Somebody let's make that motion. I'll move. want a roll call vote on that? Yeah, we need to pick a date also that we want to do that, because we usually do that um, at a separate time. Last year it was on a Friday. You see that? That has to be some kind of around election time. Um, last year it was... received a letter from Code Enforcement Officer Walt Ottens. It says, this is to inform the Town of Sanford Town Board that I will be retiring from the position of Code Enforcement Officer effective December 31st, 2012. I have been involved with the town since 1976 in different capacities, and I have enjoyed working for and with the residents. Joyce and I are looking forward to being retired and pursuing other interests. I will be available to answer any questions that might come up while the new codes person gets to know the town. Once again, it has been my pleasure to serve residents of the town of Sanford. Uh, I think we need a motion to accept his resignation with the debt. received a thank you card um, from Robert Maycumber. It says, to all, I want to thank the entire town board, Allison, Deb, Sylvia, the Great Retirement Party, at the Masonic Hall on September 15, 2012. It was a great time. I am honored and proud that I had the opportunity to work with the Great Town Board for 37 years. I also want to thank Gordy for the presentation of the Pulsar wristwatch and the job that he and Deb did at the podium. Thank you for all, I thank you all for the watch and all the work that went into making my retirement party a memorable event. Thank you all again, Bob. Okay. Town also 
someone received a uh, letter from a Mike <coughs> Salvatore. Um, it says, I have been a certified code enforcement officer for 12 years and have taken the, the required 24 hour of in service training each year as required by the Department of State to maintain my yearly certification. I presently work part time for the town of Deposit, the town of Hancock, and the village of Hancock. I am qualified to administer the New York State building codes and local laws for building residential and commercial projects. I am a former building contractor and am familiar with all faucets of building, building trades. I have worked with most of the local building contractors, concrete contractors, and construction companies to complete residential and commercial building projects from the building permit process, plan review, and inspections to the completion and insurance of a certificate of occupancy for that project. I am also a flood administrator and qualified to administer the New York State building codes and local laws for construction projects that are located in the floodplain on the rivers, brooks, and lakes. The structures located in the floodplain must be elevated to the base, flood elevation, and flood protected to prevent the loss of life and property damage during a flood event. I've worked with the DEC and with the Delaware County Flood Mitigation <coughs> Committee on the DFER maps to reduce the flood hazards our communities have experienced during the recent flooding. I have worked with engineers to develop new septic systems and those systems that have failed on large parcels and also on lots on the lakes and rivers to bring them into compliance with the Department of Health regulations. I believe that I have the qualifications and experience to work for the town of Sanford as the code enforcement officer. Now he would take over after December 31st, 25, you know, Walt's job. received petitions with additional additional signatures from the Sanford Quagga Lake citizens for a moratorium on Marshall's Shale. I have those here. And then I asked the town board to approve holding um, public hearing next month for local law to override the tax levy limit established in general municipal law. I guess I want to explain that a little bit. Um, I, believe, I believe it's going to be difficult to get down below the 2% and uh, even if we do I think we better have in place like we did last year the uh, Possibility if we go over, we need to have that in place. Most municipalities put in place just to just in case. Two <coughs> second. I think we need to roll call more than that. Do we need Decker? David O. Martin? R. Aye. Gordon Tyler? <coughs> David K. Sexton? Kevin J. Supervisor Decker from Deposit Sanford to ask about the no left turn at Hale Eddy, and they suggested that I put my request in writing. I am respectfully requesting that both boards consider asking for a review of the new signage at Hale Eddy regarding a no left turn. I have been trying to get some answers regarding the reasoning a no left turn was instituted. 
And I was told on two different occasions from the state DOT in Binghamton that it was requested by town officials. According to my research, that is untrue. The request started with a village meeting about a state bridge within village limits, so town officials were not present. The mayor and some other officials declared that it was unsafe. The DOT, in response to what they thought was a legitimate request for change, instituted change. I have had many long conversations with these DOT officials, and from those conversations, as well as other sources, such as retired official, such as a retired official, I have received the impression that an, an official request must carry weight. I would appreciate it if you would consider my request to ask for a further review from an official stance. The traffic up River Road has increased, and all vehicles with a tow of any kind, from a horse trailer to a fifth wheel, are using River Road rather than making a U-turn on the highway where the speed limit is 55 miles per hour. Ordinary passenger car drivers are saying that this is not a good solution because of the winding road and narrow shoulders. In addition, the extra wear and tear on the road resulting from the change in traffic patterns will eventually cost the taxpayers additional money in road repairs. Superintendent of Roads, Dan Axtell, did not know of the change that impacted him and his crew until he read it in the deposit courier. I have asked for FOIL for other situations that have such speeds and are divided and want a U-turn. The unofficial response is that they are few and far between. Hail and is unique. The accident data to institute a change is not there. Two reported accidents in the last five years. The Interstate 86 report indicates that the line of sight is not good, but there is no other reasonable alternative solution other than the current 55 miles per hour. It also indicated a few average ac accident rate when compared with similar situations throughout New York State. I believe a request for a review evaluation would be met with courtesy and respect from the Region 9 DOT. I sincerely hope that you will consider my request. Thank you, Jill Gordon. I did receive a call from her just before I come down this evening. <coughs> Excuse me, and I had a pretty good conversation with her. I have met with uh, Tommy Axel uh, a couple times in reference to this, and uh, we discussed the fact that um, the DOT has made that change. Um, I believe I, I told her, as you read in here, that there was no town participation. Well, the town of Sanford did participate in that meeting. Um, even though the mayor uh, was the one that uh, indicated that uh, the situation down there was so unsafe. I know that the, myself and I can't remember who all attended that meeting. But we agreed also that um, <clears throat> at that point they, um, they were doing the project during the summer, which uh, we favored because the children, the school children would not be participating during that, that time period uh, because of the fact that the residents from the Boggle Lake were unhappy with that timetable. Uh, DOT has changed it until I believe April of next year, which I indicated to her that um, I believe I'm speaking for the rest of the board here that we felt that uh, we were more inclined to go forward with it, protecting the children as compared to the residents at the lake. So as far as the town of Sanford, we were somewhat discouraged, uh, disappointed that um, they held this over. But getting back to the problem, she indicated that um, tractor trailers in the process of doing it the way it is now would get hung up or had trouble making that turn like it was in the paper on this circle over here in Binghamton. Anybody seen that? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> she indicated that she had been to the town deposit meeting. Um, she was somewhat unhappy after that meeting, but I also told her that the 
town of Sanford really felt pretty much the same as the town of, of Deposit. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we were concerned about if the two towns put pressure on DOT uh, to make a change, and if there was an accident with the change, that the towns might possibly be dragged into it. Dragged into a court case. Um, she indicated to me that most of the cars go straight across the same as they always have. And so I left it that really, <coughs> she left it that she was going to come to the meeting. <coughs> she decided not to come to the meeting and felt that. Uh, she was still corresponding with the OT, but the two towns was really not going to get involved. I would suggest that we send her maybe to speak with the fire chief and maybe even the bus garage. And the bus garage was in those two. It was their recommendation that they wanted. <coughs> well, I indicated to her that possibly DOT made that change because of the uh, Mr. Struble, which was the head of the bus garage indicated that they were going to do that anyway and she said to me that um, they have to do it that way because they pick up a couple children down there. So I, I, I don't know but at this point it, uh, uh, I guess she's comfortable with the action that the town of Sanford took she's not pleased but uh, um, and she accepts the town of deposit. I, I guess that's where it'll stop at this point. Okay. Like I said, everything. Mm -hmm. Really, I have only one one more question here, and that's to do with the, uh, the grant. Uh, <coughs> I believe that. The grant has been completed, other than, I guess I'd like to have you fill the board in, which is, uh, <coughs> or just whatever that, that you were working with, right? I was able to um, get back money that was used towards uh, legal notices and things that we had mailed out. I was able to get money back from that. It's also able to get the town money back. Um, they reimbursed money that I, time that I spent on the grant. So they reimbursed some money to us for that also. So. Now, I did meet with uh, Allison and Charlie. But, uh, he, he did an audit of the books. He has come up with a, a list of things that has to be done. Yep. Uh, he does not have that <coughs> up to date yet. Right. Right. We have to wait for the report and, to um, come back. I believe one of the things that was a concern 